Hey, good morning, good day, good Monday. Back with another installment, as you can probably see and tell from the description of my hour bipolar epileptic sleep apnea, dystonia, ADD, ADHD, all that good shit in my life. <laughs> ah, I mentioned uh, not long ago that. I feel that I'm in midst of a swing, not sure which direction it's going to throw me in. Um, so far, it really feels like I'm kind of in limbo, you know, I'm, you know on, the, on the fence, you know, teetering, tottering, you know, upswing, downswing, but so far, I've been straight down the middle. You know, I'm not putting much of anything into it, meaning I'm not uh, celebrating the fact that it's not one direction or the other. I'm not hating the fact that it's not one direction or the other. Excuse me. I'm just kind of feeling what the uh, what the disorder is bringing on. You know, it's it's neutral, which I can handle. It's still better than um, you know, being down. Still be it's still better than, than negative. So, but uh, one thing I was wondering, uh, maybe I can spark up some comments in the uh, comment section down below, or uh, you know, comments when I post and share this to to my Facebook. Anyone out there um, dealing with? bipolar disorder and things of that nature, um, do you find it, um, well, like one thing can just set me off and whatever course I was going on, whatever project I was working on, whatever, you know, it is, some things just, it hits me and I go, you know, zero to fuck it in a heartbeat wondering if, uh, if I'm the only one, if there's anyone out there, well, I know I'm not the only one, but if there's only anyone out there who uh, watches these and has experienced the same feelings, and if so, what type of activities or what type of scenario do you find yourself in when these moments hit, and where do your actions uh, what kind of scenario do your actions then put you into? Um, I know a lot of my scenarios go from a decent time or a decent scenario and one thing comes, it hits, it does whatever it does and then I'm it's it's right down into the, into the dumps. Occasionally I can get the you know what? you're in the way, or you're messing up, so you're done, let me crumple it up, get rid of it, and keep on moving, and keep it positive. Sometimes I can do that. Uh, but, way far too often, far too often, you know, when one thing sets me off and I flare up like a pack of hemorrhoids. Or whatever the case was. So I would do my homework. 
work. Of course, I would procrastinate on whatever else needed to be done, but I got it done. Now, mom would always want me to call when I got home to let her know that I got home safe. And the phone call would usually entail what she wanted me to do around the house. There were times when I would call and she was away from her desk or she was in a meeting, uh, whatever the case was, I wouldn't be able to get a hold of her. But I went and started doing my thing anyway. Or I would have a plan, let's say it was a Friday, maybe no practice, uh, no homework, and I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna vacuum the living room, I'm gonna vacuum the hall, I'm gonna vacuum the bedrooms. And when mom gets home, she's gonna be so surprised when she calls to, to, to let me know what my chores are, she's going to be so surprised. She calls or I call her, get a hold of her at work, talking, talking, and I could have the vacuum in my hands. And she'd say, all right, well, vacuum the living room and do this. And I'm like, all right, I'm all right. And I, I, get, I get angry, kind of, I guess because the surprise was, was ruined or it didn't play out the way I was hoping it to. But when that happens, I no longer want to do that. Um, damn it, brain farts. I don't want to do that activity, you know? Even if I'm in the middle of it now, you know, because you had mentioned doing it, I don't want to do it now. You know, I guess, you know, maybe because it, it didn't seem special to me any longer because I'm doing it without being told. It's. And it, and it continues to this day, uh, even with, uh, you know, let's say, doing the dishes. You know, I don't like doing them, but, you know, I know my wife hates it even more, especially since she does so freaking much uh, in, around, for the house, us, everybody. But I could be in the middle of doing them and get it, even a text from her. Oh, could you do the dishes for me? And I'm going, damn it, I'm already done. <laughs> and my son was the same way, and he was having a hard time with it for a while. Um, because he would actually, ooh, bad place to break down. He would shut down and really not do what it is that uh, you know he was told to do or asked to do. And before he was able to express himself clearly, you know, it just turned into him being a defiant little turd and being belligerent and getting himself in trouble, getting grounded, you know, asking why didn't you finish it when you're told that you know to do whatever. You know, you started to do it, and then it hit me one day. Let me ask him, like, when you're doing something, and mom says you're already doing it, and then mom says, oh, by the way, do the dishes, and you're already doing it, or you plan on doing it yourself, and he goes, and then I don't want to do it. And I said, exactly. I said, I know exactly how you feel. First off, first and foremost, get that idea out of your head. Get that whole thing of, well, I don't want to do it now. Get that out of your head, because you're going to have to do it. You just have to, especially if you're the kid, and the mom, or the dad has said to do whatever, just shut up and do it. But I am uh, really interested in if, uh, hearing if anybody else has uh, experienced the same thing, whether uh, they themselves or uh, maybe a sibling or you know, some family member that you're close to, somebody, anybody, anything. Uh, you know, even at 42, I haven't been able to quite figure out why you know, I have that feeling. Other than, you know, my, my shot at surprising somebody with something neat is now dashed. And maybe that's what it is. Who knows? As far as the rest of the uh, subject matter that I like to cover goes, 
Uh, you know, I had my injections a couple weeks ago, all on the left this time, and my right side's giving me some problems, but still standing. Uh, can't keep a good man down for long. I believe we are now a week free of seizures. many weeks at this point removed from anti-seizure meds. Um, he's been going to bed before bed and hopefully throughout the day. He says he does throughout the day. Um, but we get on, on you know, an hour or so before bedtime for my son to practice his deep breathing exercises. Since he started doing that, now sleeping on his back and and snoring at night. He's never snored and he's breathing through his mouth. So things are looking better and better and up and up and uh, really starting to uh, point to the seizures not being uh, you know a a thing triggered by the brain. Um, it, it's not looking, it's no longer looking like it's an epilepsy issue. And hopefully the sleep study that he um, is taking part in at the end of this month will say, yes, we can see that the oxygen levels are dipping you know, to a, uh, you know, a dangerous, I don't know, uh, point or a, you know, a trigger point and that's what's causing his seizures. Now, if they can say this is what's probably causing his seizures, that's more than what uh, you know, Children's Hospital has been able to say you know, through both neurologists and all their studies and everything, they keep going, well, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. But nobody, even um, the first one he, the first overnight he did there where they they're watching the brain. They're not paying attention to his breathing or anything. They said, uh, well, he did, his brain did show activity, seizure activity, but watching the camera, his body wasn't reacting. Excuse me. So again, me not being a doctor, that would still kind of say to me that, uh, you know, if his brain is showing that, then there is something else that's causing this. If it's not coming outward, but yet the brain is still saying, you know, alert, alert, alert. Hmm. But, uh, I don't know. First and foremost, answers and his health. Well, his health and then answers. And, uh, Hopefully, they can say, yes, this is what's causing them, or yes, this is what has been causing them. And, uh, you know, seek some type of, of compensation for the last four years of failed medications and MRIs and CAT scans and blood work overnight stays in the hospitals. Uh, I mean, they're all unnecessary, but you know, having more seizures than what was needed to have being diagnosed incorrectly. You know, not many people realize that a side effect to these anti-seizure medications are more seizures. Meaning, if you weren't epileptic to begin with, and they put you on this medication, it could cause seizures. I'm on Depakote. It was prescribed for uh, first my migraines, and then they left me on it, kind of up the dosage for my uh, for bipolar. They gave it to me for uh, like a mood stimulator, 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 and. Uh, reading the info on it, it can cause, it can cause seizures, seizures. 
Uh, but that's where we're at right now. Getting ready for the oldest to come home for Thanksgiving break. Miss my kid. She's uh she's tightening up her radio show over there in school. Sounding good, doing good. Well, I'm about to park it and get my butt inside and start this work day. I will see you all again real soon, without a doubt.